Magnesium is the second most abundant intracellular electrolyte, the first being potassium. Now, how abundant is magnesium? There is about 25 grams of magnesium in a human body, out of which 99% is inside the cells, that is, in the intracellular compartment and the rest one person is in the extracellular compartment of the intracellular magnesium 53 persons in the bones 27 person in the muscles and the rest 19 person in the soft tissues Of the one person extracellular magnesium, 70% stays in the interstitium, and only 30% of that one person circulates in the plasma. So, when we are measuring the plasma magnesium, we are only measuring 0.3% of the total magnesium and that value is around 1.3 to 2.3 milli equivalents per liter today we will be discussing about magnesium under three main headings hypomagnesemia hypermagnesemia and the therapeutic roles of magnesium Hypomagnesemia is rather quite common and seen in about 11% of the hospitalized patients and up to 65% of patients admitted in the intensive care units. Now, hypomagnesemia may be due to dietary deficiency in case of chronic alcoholism or gastrointestinal malabsorption or increased renal losses or citate binding in case of massive transfusion. The clinical features of hypomagnesemia include nausea and vomiting, weakness, convulsions, tetany, fasciculations, and in the electrocardiogram, prolonged PR and QT intervals, diminished T-wave morphology, and hypomagnesemia is commonly accompanied by hypokalemia and hypocalcemia. The treatment of hypomagnesemia would be correction of the cause and administration of magnesium. Now coming to hypermagnesemia. Hypermagnesemia is, is quite a serious condition but fortunately it is seen rarely. Hypermagnesemia is said to occur when the serum magnesium level is above 4 milli equivalents per liter. At this level, there is decreased deep tendon reflexes, and then as the magnesium level of the serum goes up, Other features like QRS widening in the ECG, heart block, and even cardiac arrest can occur. Hypotension is common, narcosis, and respiratory depression from paralysis of muscles of respiration, mainly the diaphragm. Hypermagnesemia is most commonly seen in 
excessive administration of magnesium for therapeutic purposes example for the treatment of preeclampsia or eclampsia where large doses of magnesium is administered it can also occur in renal failure where the excretion is impaired now the management of hypermagnesemia include administration of calcium gluconate followed by diuretics or if this does not solve the problem hemodialysis may be needed and also appropriate respiratory and circulatory support and correction of the cause now coming to the therapeutic uses of magnesium the first use would be to correct hypomagnesemia the second being treatment of preeclampsia and eclampsia magnesium controls preeclampsia or eclampsia by systemic vertebral and uterine vasodilatation via direct effects on the vessels as well as increasing concentration of endogenous vasodilators like endothelium derived relaxing factor and calcitonin gene related peptide and it attenuates endogenous vasoconstrictors like endothelin 1 and the properties of magnesium which may be of potential use include muscle relaxing effects especially when administered intravenous it enhances non depolarizing muscle relaxation action and attenuates muscle fasciculations it decreases potassium release with administration of succinylcholine it is used to reduce the anesthetic requirement and attenuates cvs effects of laryngoscopy and intubation it limits edema formation after brain injury the prophylactic administration of magnesium during cardiopulmonary bypass surgery show decreased incidence of post operative atrial fibrillation magnesium causes bronchodilation by inhibition of calcium mediated smooth muscle contraction inhibition of histamine release from the mast cells and inhibition of nicotinic acetylcholine release for this reason intravenous magnesium has been reported to improve bronchodilation when standard therapies have failed in bronchial asthma the arteriolar dilating effects combined with reduction in catecholamine release may be beneficial in patients with pheochromocytoma however whenever magnesium is administered for therapeutic purposes careful monitoring for signs of hypermagnesemia has to be done like decrease in deep tendon reflexes decrease in rate of respiration or hypotension or ecg changes so that hypermagnesemia does not occur thank you